Portra 400 is one of the most popular color negative film stocks there is. Odds are, if you're scrolling on Instagram, you've probably come across a Portra 400 photo or someone trying to emulate its look and feel. It's a high quality film that's known for its smooth and natural skin tones. It has medium contrast and a fairly fine amount of grain. So today I'm going to show you guys how to create a similar look all in Lightroom. But first let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. Asus, they gave us this monitor and that's what we'll be editing on today. Look, everyone has different needs when looking for a monitor. It depends on what type of work you're doing and your budget. What's important for me as a photographer, editor, and overall content creator is a monitor that's color accurate. Let's be honest, a lot of people hate forking out the big bucks for a monitor. So that's why I wanted to present you guys with an option that's kind of the best of both worlds. Now, whether you're a video or photo editor, blogger, student, or occasional gamer, this is the ASUS ProArt Display PA278QV 27 inch IPS panel monitor. It's Kalman verified to guarantee industry leading colors and is factory calibrated for excellent Delta E of less than two color accuracy. Now, if you're not familiar with Kalman, they're currently the most popular calibration solution in the industry. There are actually only two brands that offer Kalman verified monitors. Let's fire off a few other quick points before getting back into the video. It has 100% sRGB and 100% Rec. 709 wide color gamut. Translation, this is the number of colors that the monitor can display, and 100% means that it meets the international color standard. It also has a ton of ports. The only thing that would be nice is maybe USB-C. And the best part? It tilts, it swivels, it pivots, and you can adjust the height for a V comfortable viewing experience. Plus, it's compatible with VESA mounts. Is this monitor top of the line? No, but it is a great monitor for entry level video and photo editors, which some of you may be. Now let's get into the edit. Okay, last disclaimer before we get started. One size rarely fits all when it comes to editing styles, so you're going to need to tweak your photo depending on how it was taken. Now we're gonna break this down into some key sections that are necessary when achieving a Portra 400 look, and then I'll show you some of the more unique edits for this particular photograph. One of the most prominent features of the Portra 400 look is the dynamic range, and that's actually, in my opinion, the hardest part to emulate. So let's get started with just muting the highlights all together. So we'll bring those down a bit and let's also raise the shadows just to even everything out. We really want to achieve a super flat image and we're going to lift the blacks and then scroll up here to lower the contrast because these images do have a really soft look. What you'll notice with these images is they are softer, they're less textured, and they're lower contrast, but that doesn't mean that they're completely flat. You're still trying to leave some differentiation there with the lights and the darks. We're just overall trying to smooth out the image and flatten it a little bit to get that film look. So after lowering the contrast, we're going to lower the texture, so bring that down quite a bit. Again, and going for that soft look. And as we lower the texture, we'll compensate this a little later on by adding grain. And last but not least, we're going to lower the whites, flatten those highlights out, flatten those whites out. What we're trying to achieve with the tones in this image is a couple of different things. For one, the skin tones. They have to be a little bit warmer, creamy, smooth. And then we're focusing on the color that we're actually getting through the highlights and through the shadows. One thing that is consistent throughout every Portra 400 image is the greens in the shadows. And something that I find differentiates a little bit is the pinks or the blues in the highlights. They're very faint, but they are there. These images always seem to give off a very cozy vibe, and I think a big part of that is in the tones. So let's get started. We're gonna move to the HSL panel, and the reds are often very desaturated, and if they are there, they're usually leaning towards the orange, so let's do that. This is also going to help us with getting those really natural skin tones. The oranges, I really wouldn't change too much other than maybe bringing the luminance down sometimes depending on the photo. Again, that's just to flatten out the skin tones. The yellows are quite desaturated because I really wanna bring out those oranges and those warm 
warmer tones. So less yellow, we're always going for like a warm, healthy orange, I guess you could say. Now, when we're talking about the greens, the greens are my favorite to adjust for this look because they are green, you see the green, but it takes on a little bit of a bluish hue and here's why. I'm going to shift the hue all the way to the right towards aqua or almost all the way to the right and desaturate them quite a bit and lower the luminance as well. So now you can see we have much more of a muted soft vibe to the greens in the image. With the aqua and the blues, now that we've reached this part of the image, I don't touch these too much unless, you know, I have a shot that has a lot of aqua or a lot of blue in it, or like a blue ocean or a blue sky. But in any case, I would bring up the luminance on both of those quite a bit and change the hue of the blues towards a more aqua color. So the saturation of the aquas in the blues is pretty particular depending on the photo. But one thing you wanna watch out for is that they don't look super saturated. The blue is, still exists in the photo. It's obviously still blue. We didn't remove it completely, but you just want to make sure it's not too vibrant or too bright. Last but not least, the often forgotten colors, the magentas and the purples. <laughs> Usually I just completely push those back in saturation because I want to manually add in any magentas back if um, I decide to do that with the highlights. For a 400 speed film stock, Portra does have grain, but it's a surprisingly smooth grain, which I feel like contributes to why everyone loves these images so much. It's not a distracting amount of grain. I usually place my grain amount in size around 20 to 30, depending on the image, and then I'll keep the roughness around 50. A few things I'm going to do for this particular image. I'm going to bring down the dehaze to minus five. Next, I'm going to bring up the exposure on this image because with Portra 400 photos, we see a lot of really bright photos, but still soft and muted highlights. And I think that's because Portra 400 film tends to really like an overexposed photo and favor that a little bit. So let's lean on the side of overexposing this a bit and keeping that bright but muted vibe. So split toning with Portra 400 is the moment where this look really starts to come together. It's when you get to add those beautiful greens in the shadows and then you get to bring out those like bluey or pinky or warmer tones in the highlights. So I'm going to select a teal or a greeny blue color, uh, a light greeny blue for the shadows. And I'm going to make sure the balance is set at around plus 46 or 50 just to allow those greens to come through only in the blacks. And then I would add kind of a pink or a blue tone to either the highlights or the midtones, and that'll depend on your image. In this case, we did add it to the midtones. And again, a very, very light amount of it just to give that creaminess in the highlights. And it's subtle, but it really makes a huge difference to this photo. And this is the final photo. There's the before and after for you guys. A very simple, clean Portra 400 effect here. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to get a hold of this preset for yourselves, we'll have it linked for free in the description box below, but don't forget to tweak it again for your own photograph and see what works depending on the lighting and the situation that you took it in. So if you like this video, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the bell to get notified for all future videos. Big thanks to Asus for sponsoring this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.